In part four of this series, I'll show you how to rearrange four more equations for different variables. Starting with the first equation, we have a is equal to b plus c over b minus c. They want us to isolate for c and b. Starting with c, our target is found in two places. So what we want to do is first get rid of this fraction, and we can do that by multiplying each term of this equation by the common denominator, that being b minus c. So I'll multiply the right side by b minus c and the left side by b minus c. I end up with b minus c in brackets times a. Make sure that you put b minus c in brackets, otherwise it's incorrect. Is equal to b plus c over b minus c times b minus c. Notice what this does. It gets rid of the denominator on the right side, leaving you with only b plus c. So now we have b minus c times a is equal to b plus c. And still, the term that we're looking for is found in two different places. So what I'm going to do is expand the left side, where I have b times a. I'm multiplying a to both of these terms. Minus c times a is equal to b plus c. And I will bring this term over to that side and this b over. I'm going to show you why. So right now we have b a minus b is equal to c, this term, plus c a. By bringing the two c's to one side, I can now common factor the c on the right side. So if I common factor it, now I have two factors. So factoring out a c, I end up with 1 plus a. And the left side stays the way it is. Now, if I divide both sides by 1 plus a, look what happens. 1 plus a. 1 plus a, we have isolated for c. I'm highlighting the equation. Now they also want you to find what b is. Rather than going through all of this all over again, the steps are almost identical, except for a difference at this stage. So I brought the b's over. I had b a minus b is equal to c plus c a. Rather than having factored out a c, I can factor out a b. So factoring out a b on the left side, I end up with a minus 1 is equal to c plus c a. Dividing both sides by a minus 1, this cancels out, leaving us with our equation where b is isolated. So b is equal to everything on the right side. Let's continue. In this equation, they want us to find out what r is equal to. So what I can do, since this is my target, is multiply both sides by i. Remember, this is a fraction, and we don't like to work with fractions. So by multiplying both sides by the common denominator i, this i and this i cancel out, leaving us with i times s sub n. By the way, this sub n, this n part, isn't a variable. So you'll never be asked to isolate for this little thing, is equal to r bracket 1 plus i raised to the power of n minus 1. And notice that r is a factor being multiplied to this big factor. I'll divide both sides by this big factor. Watch. And what this will do is cancel that out with the one at the bottom, leaving you with r is equal to i times s sub n over that big factor, which I won't write down, but hopefully you know what I mean. This one that I wrote in green should be underneath there. Let's move on to the next. Here they want us to isolate for i and r. Let's start with i. i is right there, and it's in parentheses raised to the power of 12. I can get rid of the power of 12 by 12th rooting both sides of this equation. And by that, this is what I mean. The 12th root of the left side, bracket 1 plus r over 4 raised to the power of 4 is equal to, and 12th rooting the right side gets rid of this 12th power. So you should end up with only 1 plus i, the base of the power. So the exponent 12 is gone. And to get i, I'll take this 1 to the left side. So I have the 12th root of 1 plus r over 4 to the power of 4 minus 1 is equal to i. Now, one thing that's interesting about roots is that the 12th root actually means a fractional exponent. So technically, if I had the 12th root of x, for example, that's the same thing as saying x to the power of 1 over 12. And 
if I change this back into fractional exponents like this, I'll end up with 1 plus r over 4 raised to the power of 4, and that being raised to the power of 1 over 12. And one thing that you've learned in the past with the exponent rules is that if you have a power raised to a power, you multiply the powers together. 4 times 1 over 12 is actually 1 over 3. So this is like saying 1 plus r over 4 raised to the power of 1 over 3 minus 1 is equal to i. And 1 over 3 is the same thing as saying the third root of 1 plus r over 4 minus 1 is equal to i. So this is the same thing as writing it in this format. They want us to also solve for r. So starting over here, you would fourth root both sides. That will get rid of this 4 and the fourth root here, leaving us with 1 plus r over 4 is equal to the fourth root of 1 plus i raised to the power of 12, bringing this 1 over, the fourth root of 1 plus i raised to the power of 12 minus 1. Remember, I'm bringing this 1 over, it's positive, And r over 4 on the left side. We want to get r on its own, so we'll multiply both sides by 4. That cancels that out. Multiply this by 4, and multiply 1 times 4, which is negative 4. Just continuing my work up here, I have r is equal to 4 times the fourth root of 1 plus i raised to the power of 12 minus 4. Now what's interesting is we can apply the same thing that we talked about here over here, where I have 12 as a power and this index of 4 suggests that it's a fractional exponent of 1 over 4 multiplying 12 times 1 over 4 is 3, so you can replace this radical with this fourth root and this 12 with a power of 3. So 1 plus i raised to the power of 3 times 4 minus 4. Finally, saving the best for last, we want to isolate for g and m. Let's start with g. I'll multiply both sides by m minus 1, that will get rid of the fraction. So s times m minus 1, that's equal to f minus square root of g to the raised to the power of 2. Now, I want to get rid of this power of 2. I square root both sides, leaving me with, on the right side, f minus the square root of g, and on the left side, the square root of s bracket m minus 1. No need to expand inside here. Bringing that f over, s bracket m minus 1 minus f is equal to negative square root of g. Divide both sides by negative 1, this term by negative 1 and this term by negative 1. This leaves us with this becoming negative s bracket m minus 1, this becoming positive f, and this becoming the square root of g. We can get rid of a square root by squaring both sides. This square and this square root will disappear, leaving you with only g on the right side. And don't be tempted to distribute this 2 to the terms inside. That's not mathematically allowed. So leave that two out there with the two terms inside. That concludes our series on rearranging literal formulas.